John here, guys. This is how you check if your battery is charged. What's up guys? I've been waiting for this day for so long. I've been washing my car because today we're going to be using these to fly Acro drones and a wing. And this is Radio Master Surface Radio with a special thing on it. But first, let me call to my expert. Oh, my wing is doing that. What's happening? Ah! What are you doing with my radio? I'm a motion expert. As a result of this video, anyone will be able to track motion of his HTX radio with Betaflight flight controller, because now it's so easy, it's crazy. Surface radio is a remote control for boring stuff like RC car, boats, and they use these for throttle and these for steering left and right. Radio Master MT12 is a special one because it has Express LRS built in and you can even do these for crazy long range. And ever since Radio Master released this remote, I was thinking I gotta somehow fly with it. And I was like, okay, I can use these for coordinated yaw and roll this for throttle but then like i can install joystick here for pitch or i can use this for pitch that that's not very cool by the way radio master did not send me this radio i bought it from my patreon money and thanks a lot to all my supporters but then i was like calm down bitch i can code and make a motion tracker But Arduino standard libraries are kind of slow and then you need a code board alignment, gyro and accelerometer calibration. Sounds familiar. Wait a second, Betaflight has all that already. It is only missing SBUS output for your pitch and roll. And then this is just your head tracker or radio tracker or your imaginary girlfriend tracker. So I reached to Mr. Steve, a Betaflight developer, so that he taught me how to make Betaflight code to output SBUS, not just receive SBUS. And he loved this idea so much, he just went ahead and made it work. I almost didn't have to code anything. But my role was still very important. Hey, Steve. Code faster, faster, faster. <laughs> okay, come. I'm gonna explain how to connect and set it up. You can use the timeline, but it's pretty easy. It's just three wires here, two wires here, and you're done. But I want to emphasize that this works way better than I thought. I have it connected to Tiny Whoop, DJI Open Racer. Angle mode is so intuitive, it's just your pitch and roll. And acro mode is all the same, just more fun. And you can even plug in your radio in the simulator like Velocidron. It's just practice there. Look, I'm flying with one hand while recording a stick cam with another hand. Using only one hand for drone racing is a big advantage because your other hand can do anything you want while you're flying a drone. Arm up, go! Whoa, what? What the fuck? Video, video! All right, fighters, arm them up, go! Mr. Dave, this is emergency. What? Kali somehow beat my time in the GQ leaderboard, and I think this is the first female that ever been higher than me on the leaderboard. Oh my goodness. And, uh, well, let's uh, call Kali and see what she says, how she, did she do that? Hello? Mm. Kali FTV 10 I guess it's just because I'm better. All right, she just said I'm worthless. <laughs> you shit pilot. We've been flying this motion radio literally two days non-stop, so much fun. Oh, Maybe God. that's the only way oh. Matt can freestyle. But the coolest experience <laughs> is to fly your FPV wing. There's no yaw to worry about, but then you're like a jet pilot, except with a throttle on the radio. I can't believe you made this. <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> of course, it is not going to replace my sticks for the drone racing, but honestly, for the wing, I don't even want to go back to my normal radio. Launching is a little hard because as you do it, your hands are kind of moving around. You just need to watch for that, but it's just so natural to fly it in FPV. All right, you need better flight flight controller. I'm using Foxier F722 20 by 20. That was just laying on my table. By the way, you're doing everything here at your own risk. If you burn your radio or anything, that's not on me. You can blame Cole because he's playing video games instead of flying drones. So we will need to solder five wires total. And ideally, if you just can find two separate URs, two separate grounds, and this 5v4 pin, which is actually 4v5. If your flight controller doesn't have it marked, you can actually find it by plugging in USB in the flight controller and then with a 
multimeter checking which 5 volt pod is being powered from USB. In my case, it was this 5 volt pin. It means that most likely your flight controller can be powered up from this 5 volt pin if you provide 5 volts. Most likely. If you're scared, you can power up your flight controller using this VCC pin and providing some small, I don't know, 2S battery. And then you don't need to solder this 4V5 pin. That's actually a good idea because then you can just depower your flight controller when you don't use it on your radio. Anyway, I decided to take a risk and uh, this is my soldering diagram. These three or two wires are going into your radio into serial trainer port. And this is how your radio will know its orientation and passes it over to your flying craft. So in this case, if you solder this red wire, then your flight controller will be powered up from your radio. Another good idea that I was too lazy to do is that right here you can solder like a separate switch to turn on and off your flight controller. It might be alright, but every time I plug in USB into my flight controller on the radio, it also tries to power like the whole radio and the radio really don't like it. Anyways, I miss all the precaution steps and I am still alive, so... It's whatever you decide to do. Pay attention that TX from the flight controller goes to RX on the radio, as always. Here at the bottom, you can see a weird connection. TX5 goes to the ground through the button, and they are connected when the button is pressed. You need this button to reset your axis when you're ready to reset your axis. Devon, you're making a lot of sense right now. If you ever had to deal with head trackers, then you know what's happening with your. Imagine you're preparing to fly, you're walking with your radio around, then you sit down, and of course your yaw will be crazy because radio will think that your yaw is like pointing somewhere else. So you push this button to tell to the flight controller that like, this is my zero yaw. The current yaw is now zero. Make it happen. And flight controller will be like, okay, okay, I remember now that this direction is zero yaw. This is the type of a button that I was using. It's very little. You just need to figure out which pins are connected when you're pushing this button. And solder them up according to this diagram. And then you can double side tape this button anywhere in your radio where it's accessible. On MT-12 remote, the serial UART port is inside, but it's not too bad. You don't have to take apart the whole radio. But before you open up your radio, you need to update HTX to 2.10, because in previous versions, you cannot use that serial port. And my radio came with 2.10, but with a development build, and it also didn't support it. So anyways, update your radio to 2.10 HTX. So then just these two screws, Pull carefully this wheel, unplug its ribbon cable, and the plug will be right there. I, you can read it. I don't know why I'm reading it for you. This is my poor photo of that plug. You probably need like a tweezers to get close to it. And you can see here, well, you can't, but there is a ground from this side. Then there is TX, then there is RX, which we don't use. And then there's 5 volt pin. I think the name of this connector is 1mm GST. I'm not sure actually, but it's the same as Foxer Predator is using. And that's where I got it from. This is a 4 pin connector. If your connector is like 5, 6, 7 or 8 pins, you can just cut the plastics with the scissors so that it's only 4 pins. Pins. Just absolutely make sure that you're following this diagram. Don't connect 5 volt to TX. That's probably not going to be good for your radio. If you decide to use TX16S radio, for example, then you don't even need to open it up because there are two UART ports at the bottom. You can just use them. Now let's get to flashing special version of Betaflight on this flight controller. Hopefully it's not going to burn your shit when you plug in with USB in your flight controller. For now, open 11.0 Betaflight Configurator, go to Update Firmware, then Enable Expert Mode, then click Show Release Candidates, here select Development, then Auto Detect your flight controller, and right here you need to select select 450 CAC. After that, scroll a little bit down and select SBUS in the radio protocol. And then in the select commit or pull request, not in the custom defines, right here on the right side, you need to type tracker with the capital letters and then hit enter. Then it should look like this. See, it says tracker. Then click load firmware online. You might wait a little bit until cloud builds it. And then you see there will be like show log. For double verification, you can click this show log. In this log, you can scroll a little bit down until you, and then you should see something like pragma message FC version string 450 tracker one means you're good, most likely. And then you just click flash firmware and you can ignore the risk if you decide to ignore the risk. No. Hopefully in the near future it's gonna be in 4.6, so maybe you won't have to use this weird flashing procedure. Or for now, you can flash from Mr. Steve's pull request, the link will also be in the description. If it's gonna be merged in 4.6, probably some setup procedures will be changed, so you'd better really read these notes. Now we're dealing with the leading edge of the unreleased technology. Then click connect, 
this message is fine, then go to port stop and make sure that nothing is selected here except the very first line. I guess you cannot unselect it anyways, but you don't need any of this shit. Then go to setup page and click calibrate accelerometer. I forgot to tell you that at this point your flight controller should be sticky taped to your radio already. Like. Then you should absolutely double check that when you turn your radio on all three axes, the 3D picture on the setup page repeating everything you're doing with your radio. If something is off, just like with a normal drone, go to configuration page and then there is board and sensor alignment and you can adjust these values. It means you mounted your flight controller like upside down or like 90 degrees rotated on your radio. All the next steps are on the CLI tab. It's at the very bottom on the left side. Now we need to set up your pins. We need to tell Betaflight where you soldered your gun garbage too and for that you need this diagram. Your diagram could be a little bit different if you're using different flight controllers or different pins, but you should absolutely know that I soldered my radio to TX1 and then my button on TX5. Like, that's my case. Your case, figure it out. All the following commands will be in the description of this video, so it was easier for you to copy and paste, although it's not exactly copy-paste. You kind of need to think a little bit. The first magic command is this. We're telling to Betaflight that uh, serial port 0 will be used to output SBUS. Do you remember? I sold it to TX1, but programmers start counting from zero. That's why here is zero. If you soldered it to, let's say, TX9, then here you will have to put eight. It's like minus one. Don't mix it with this zero. Leave this zero alone. Then hit enter. Then you need to tell to Betaflight where did you solder your button. And for that, we need to do some resource remapping. I soldered my button to TX5. So now I have to just remember TX5. And in this case, it's not like minus one. It will be TX5. So type resource. And then it lists all the resources. In this list, I need to find serial TX5 because that's where I solder my button to. Whatever you need to find, fuck if I know. In front of serial TX5, I have C12. I need to remember this number. Then I need a free serial TX5 resource. That's pretty easy. You just copy this line, paste it right here. And instead of C12, you just type none and press enter. Then I need to assign your reset resource to C12. That's also pretty easy. You just type resource head tracker 1 C12 hit enter. Then you type set head tracker your shimmy enable off. This is the feature for the actual head tracker on your head so that you could reset your by shaking your head a little bit. We don't need it on the radio so we're turning it off. Hit enter. Then you need to type Set head tracker max angle 30. Instead of 30, you can decide to put 45, whatever you need. This will be your maximum angles that corresponds to your maximum so-called stick command. So I use 30 degrees. Maybe you want to start with 45 degrees, depending on like how shaky your hands are. If I put here 30, it means 30 degrees angle on any of the axes will give this axis like full command. Well, probably 45 is a good start, but I kind of like 30. It's less precision, but faster. Hit enter and then type save and then enter again and we're done. Now you should unplug your flight controller and power up your radio. Hopefully it's not gonna burn. Now we just gotta do a few tweaks in the HTX. If you already know how to set up SBUS trainer port, then you're pretty much done. Get the fuck out of here. I didn't know. So big thanks to HTX developers in the HTX Discord for helping me with that. Go to system hardware settings and somewhere at the bottom you should see AUX1 and you should set it to SBUS trainer. Some radios right here even allow to turn on and off its power. Mine don't, so it's whatever. Then make a new model. You can name it like I'm gonna burn my shit. In the model settings on the setup page, find trainer and set mode to master serial. I like serial. Then go to mixes and you can set up any channel order you need. This is my screen. Trainer 1, tier 1 will always be roll, tier 2 will be pitch and tier 3 will be yaw. And you see I assigned tier 1 to channel 1, tier 2 to channel 2 and tier 3 to channel 4 and that's kind of a standard unless you're flying keys or if you are nil. Throttle is a little bit more tricky on this surface radio. You see it says weight 200 and if we go inside of a throttle that's how I have it set it up. I had to put weight 200 and offset minus 100. The reason for that is that this throttle has a spring inside and it can go both ways. I didn't want to use this, so this is my zero throttle and this is my full throttle and this is my 50% throttle and this is my zero throttle. After that, power cycle radio, go to channels monitor and then you should be able to see these three bars are moving as you're moving your radio around and then throttle moving from minus 100 to plus 100 as you pushing that button. Another thing to remember, when you power up your radio with a flight controller, you gotta put it on the table and let it 
still for a few seconds, just like the normal drone, so that it calibrates its gyro. Now you need to bind this radio to your aircraft, verify that everything works like you normally verify, and be extra, extra, extra careful. You're by yourself. Follow local regulations, don't fly over people, dogs and cars and whatever. You'll probably also need to set up like these switches for like arming, angle mode, like turtle mode, whatever you want to do. And you must remember about your reset button right before you arm it. So you hold your remote flat and forward. Reset your and then arm. Don't do this, like, all right, I'm holding it flat, let me reset your, and then let me try to arm it. No. So any your movement, after you reset your, you turn your radio like this, you arm it, and your quad will freak out. Don't move your unless you want your quad to move your. And if you arm your quad while your radio is tilted back, your quad will pitch back right away. And if you did shitty soldering, and this thing disconnects as you fly, who knows what's gonna happen, let us know in the comments. Another good verification, go to channel's monitor and especially watch your channel bar. It should not drift at all if your radio is still on the table, could be like 1% a minute max. If it's moving faster, then you did not let it calibrate gyro pretty good or your flight controller is garbage. You can also like put it on the table, reset your, then move your radio around on all axes and then put it on the same place and then your should be approximately around zero. That all sounds complicated, but if you already know like like Betaflight, HTX and Express LRS, then it's really a piece of cake. If you want to buy this radio, please check out affiliate link in the description of this video. These are Johnny5 affiliate links. He almost burned his eyebrows. Guys, thank you very much for watching. Please, as always, consider subscribing to my lazy Patreon. The link in the description. I forgot to tell to like the video. Does it mean it's nobody gonna like it? Or nobody gonna like me anymore? Check out behind the scene at the very end of the video and see you in the next one, if I'm not lazy. Can do anything you want while you're flying a drone. Mr. Matt, what did you mean by that? Uh, uh, nothing, nothing. No, no. Uh, just uh, celebrate my bus. All right, Mr. Hiroki, as an actual uh, jet <laughs> pilot, do you approve this radio? Yes, it's fun actually. There's a nice uh, Sparks RC. What the heck? What's up guys? I am so excited about this day, been waiting for it for so long. No, it's actually really exciting. It's, uh, it's nice, it's very easy. Also for people that are new to flying, this could be a much easier path to get Because you don't have to learn which stick is which. This yeah, is you know, the coordination between your left and yeah. right and all that. So this is way, way more intuitive. Dave is shocked right there. <laughs> So my wing was on ghost and now I need to like build it with Express LRS and separate VTX and that kind of suck. Look at my professional cable management.